Hi there! In today's video I'm going to create a login system in PHP. I'm building this for my Cardi food court cash card system that I'm working on in another project on this channel. But the idea is to create a general purpose login system that can easily be integrated into many different projects. So let's get started. The first thing we are going to need is of course a database because we have to store the usernames and passwords somewhere. So let's log into PHP my admin. I already have a database here and a username called Cardi. And we already have some tables in this database, but we are going to need a users table as well. So let's start with that. Let's go and create a new table. And the name for this table is going to be users. And we are going to have an ID here, which is going to be an integer. And we are going to select an auto increment so that we will get a new user ID automatically every time we add a new user. And of course we need a username, which is going to be varchar. And what should be the maximum length for a username? I don't know, maybe 24 characters. And we also need the password. And what is the maximum length of a password? Well, obviously we are not going to store the passwords here in plain text. We are going to use PHP's password hash function. So let's go to php.net slash password hash. And here what we will find is that this function returns a 60 character string every time. But when we use the password default hashing algorithm, it can change in the future. So what they recommend here is that you use 255 characters to store the password. So let's use that. Let us set this to 255. And I am going to also add a role for the user because in my system I need separate roles. I think I will have an admin, I will have a merchant and perhaps some other roles as well. And I will set this to be a tiny int. I think we're not going to have that many roles. So tiny int is enough. And we might want to have an index on this role in case we want to search through all of the users who have a specific role. And what else? Let's set a collation. I'm going to use this one so that we can support emojis and stuff in the usernames if we want. And I will use the Swedish version because it will sort some Nordic characters properly. So let's save this table. And here we have it. Next, we have to actually write some code. So let's hop on to VS Code and let's create a file. I'm going to make this OOP style. So I'm going to make an auth.php and in here I will make a class called auth. And what do we need in this auth class? Well, the first thing we want to have is a way to add new users to the database. So let's create a public function add user. And we want to have a string of the username and a string of the password and also an int of the role. And before adding these things into the database, we want to probably sanitize them a little bit at least. So we might do something like username equals trim username because there might be a space in the end of the username or something like this. And we probably want to do the same thing for the password. So let's trim the password. Now you might say that, well, I want to have a space in the end of my password one, two, three and space. But I think more likely it is a mistake if you happen to put a space in the end of your password. So let's just trim it. We have to then create the hash of this password. So let's make a hash and we are going to use the password hash function, which takes the password and it takes the algorithm. So we are going to use password default. And as I said earlier, this might change the algorithm in the future, in future versions of PHP. So they will update it to use the latest, the most secure algorithm. So let's do that. Now password hash will return a string or an int or null. So we have to check what actually happens here. So it returns the hashed password or falls on failure or null if the algorithm is invalid. 
Now, I'm pretty sure that in the case of false and null, it will actually halt the execution of the program. But we might want to make sure. So we could say something like, if the hash is false, that means there was some failure in the hashing, which is kind of an unlikely event, I think. So in that case, we could probably just return false from this. So that means we were unable to add the user. So let's actually say that this returns a boolean. And the other error was null. So if this is null, the algorithm is invalid. But that is our mistake as programmers. If we put in like a wrong number here, it's going to crash and it should crash. So let's say if the hash is null, then we are going to throw a new exception. Invalid hashing algorithm. Now, it will probably crash if either of these cases are true, so we will never return false and we will never throw this exception. But just to check all the edge cases, let's do it like this. And the next thing we have to do is we have to save the username and the hash into the database. So we need a database. Let's actually pass it in, in the constructor. So let's add a public function construct. And here we are going to pass in a PDO database. And let's make this protected so that it will be saved into a property. And then what we can do is we can say this database prepare. And what are we going to prepare in here? We are going to say insert into users. And we want to add into the users an ID, but we can omit the ID because it is an auto increment. So we will add just username and password and role. And the values, we're going to have a username and a password and a role. So then we will have to actually save this into statement. And then we can say statement execute. And here we'll pass the values for all of these placeholders. So the username is going to be the username and the password is going to be not the password, but the hash. And then the role is going to be the role. Now these functions actually can throw an exception. So if we take a look here, they will in fact throw a PDO exception if something goes wrong. And I believe the execute does the same thing when we set the error mode exception attribute. So let's wrap this in a try catch block. So we are going to try to add this in the database and we are going to catch a PDO exception E and let's error log this thing. If we get an error, let's error log the E get message and then just return false. So we were unable to add the user in the database. But if we were able to add it, then we should in fact return the ID of the user. I think that would be convenient. So instead of returning bool from this function, let's return int or bool. And in fact, it's not a boolean, it is in fact false. It can't return true. It's always an integer, which is the ID of the user, or it will be false if it fails. So let's go down here. And the way we can get the ID of the new user is we can say that ID is this database last insert ID. And then we can just return the ID. And this in fact returns a string or false. So it will return false if there was a failure, but probably this exception will happen if it's going to be false. But let's check it. If ID is false, then we return false. We were unable to add the user into the database. Otherwise, we return the ID. And let's wrap it in int val, just to be clear that it should be an integer. Because as the documentation says, this returns a string. But of course, in our case, the ID is an integer. And we want to return an integer from this. So now we should be able to add users to the database. I will format this a little bit differently. And let's see if this thing works. So if we create a new file here, let's just create an index.php. And we say here, let's first of all do require once auth.php. And let's say that auth is new auth. And we need the database. So let's create the 
PDO database object. So database equals new PDO. And here we have to put in the DSN, which is going to be MySQL localhost, sorry, uh, host equals localhost. And the DB name in this case is Cardi, Cardi, like this. And the username is going to be Cardi and password is Cardi. And we want to also set the error mode for PDO so that we actually get an exception if something goes wrong. So let's say that database set attribute and PDO Atter error mode is going to be PDO error mode exception. So now if something goes wrong in the SQL query, it will throw an exception. And we can pass in the database into the auth. And then we can add a user. Let's say auth add user. And we are going to give a username, which is going to be Jack. And a password, which is going to be Jack's password. And the role is going to be, let's just set some role. Let's put one in here. Now I'm using this kind of new feature of PHP where you can name these parameters. You can of course just pass it in like this if you want. But I feel like it looks better <laughs> when I do it this way. Just so I know right away what is what. Okay, and we can get actually the user ID from this. So we can say user ID is this. And if user ID is false, then we can say echo unable to create user. And else we can say echo created user with ID. And we can put here the user ID. So let's see if this works. I will in fact go here and I will run php index.php. And it will say created user with ID one. Now I should add a new line here if I'm going to use this from the terminal. Of course, we're not going to use this from the terminal ultimately. But yeah, it works. If we now take a look at the database and we browse, then we have Jack here and we have a password hash and the role is one. So it works. Now we should in fact check if we already have the same username. <laughs> so let's add at least a to do here. So here we should add a to do check if user already exists. But if I now would add another user, let's add Jill and let's add Jill's password. And if I now run this again, then we created a user with ID two. And if we go back here, then here we have Jack and Jill now. Great, it works. So what do we have to do next? We have to be able to verify a login. So basically authenticate a user. So let's go back to our auth and let's add another method here, public function authenticate. And this also takes in the string of the username and the string of the password. And this will also return an integer or false. So it will return the ID of the authenticated user or false if no user was found. And we have to, again, do the same thing. If we're going to do some sanitization, we have to do it in both functions because otherwise it's not going to really work. So if we don't trim when we add the user and there's a space in the password and then we trim when we try to authenticate, of course, this, it's never going to work because there's going to be a space in the password hash. So let's trim these things again. So then in order to authenticate the user, we have to find the user in the database. So let's again say that statement equals this db prepare. And this time we will prepare select ID from users where username equals the username you gave. And in fact, we have to also get the password because we have to compare the password hashes. So let's do that. And let's do statement execute. And we are going to add the username here, which is the username. And again, this might fail. So let's do a try catch block here. And let's just error log this error and return false from this. 
Now, it might well be that you want to handle the exception somewhere else, so then you wouldn't add the try catch here, because of course now this will suppress the error. So if there's a problem connecting to the database, then it will just fail to authenticate. But anyway, we are going to try to find the user from the database. And then the user is going to be statement fetch. And let's pass in PDO fetch ASOC, which might be actually the default, but anyway, I'll pass it in. And this means that we are going to return an associative array from this. So in this case, since we get ID and password, it will return an array like this, where the ID is going to be the one, for example, and the password is going to be the hash in here. But also, this might return something else. It might return false if there was a failure. So failure, I believe, means that we didn't find the user. So if user is false, then we are going to return false here. If it's not false, then we should have this kind of array in there. So then that means that we will have the password in user password. Now, when you use the bracket syntax, it's always a little bit dangerous because it might not exist. Of course, it should exist because it's in our database. But if you really want to be pedantic, you might want to say, if this is not set, if we don't have user password, then that's an error. And that's a real error. So we should throw an exception. I believe this can only happen if there is no password column in the database. So I think we should just throw an exception. Password column not found in database. And this is a new exception. So then, now we can make sure that we actually have the password. So then what we can do with that is we can use the password verify function, which takes in the password, which is password, which is the one that we pass into this function. This is the plain text password. And we also pass in the hash, which is going to be the user password, like this. And what this will return is a Boolean. So true if the password and hash match, or false otherwise. So what we can do here is we can say that verify is this, and if not verify, then we are going to return false. Or we might do it even the other way. We can say, if verify is absolutely equal to true, then we are going to return the user ID from here. And otherwise, we are going to return false from this. Now, of course, we might want to check the user ID as well, that we have that. So let's do that. So let's say ID column is not found in the database. And this, of course, should be an int val. So let's do this. So now we should be able to authenticate a user, right? Let's see if this function works. So let's go back to index and let's comment out this stuff. And let's say instead of authenticate, and we will pass in here Jill and Jill's password. And we can again say that user ID is this. And if not user ID, then we are going to echo wrong password or, or username. We don't know. <laughs> wrong username or password. Let's add the new line here since I'm going to use this from the terminal at first. And otherwise, we can say echo welcome user ID. And let's put the user ID here. Let's see if it works. If we run index.php, it says welcome user ID 2. If we put the wrong password, I added an extra S in there, and then we run this, it says wrong username or password. Also, if I put the right password, but the wrong username, then we cannot log in. So it works. Now we can authenticate a user. What is next? We need to save the state that the user is logged in. How do we do that? Let's go to auth.php again, and let's create a public 
function log user in. And this will take the integer of the user ID, and this will probably just return void. It doesn't return anything. And what we have to do is we have to save this user ID into the session. And we can use the global session variable, and we can just say logged in user is going to be the user ID. But before we can use the session, we have to call session start, but we want to call this only once. So we might just put this in the index in the beginning, or we could say here, if session status equals PHP session none, then we are going to start the session. So that way we don't have to call session start, we can just do it like this, so it will automatically start the session. Now, depending on where we call this log user in, we might not be able to start the session there. So we might also just throw an exception. Session has not been started. So then we must start the session by ourselves, otherwise it's going to give an error. Depending on your preference, you can do whatever you want. I'll in fact do it like this. So then I have to call here session start, sorry, session start, like this. And yeah, that should just save the logged in user into the database. And then we should be able to get who is logged in. So let's make a public function, logged in user. And this actually takes nothing in, it just returns an int or false, depending on if a user is logged in or not. So again, we have to check the session. And then if we do not have session logged in user, then we are going to return false, because that means no user is logged in. If we have it, but it is zero or false or null or something. So basically, if not this, then return false. Otherwise, return intval of this thing. So that should work. Now, of course, we might want to actually be able to log out as well. So let's create log user out. And it also, it actually doesn't take anything. We don't care who is <laughs> logging out. Just log the current user out. And we just set the logged in user to, let's say, null. So that is the logout method. So now we should be able to actually persist the login status. So let's try and do this. What if we say user ID is auth logged in user? So we check who is logged in. If not user ID, then we show the login form and exit. If we have a user, then we are logged in. So then we can echo here, you got to the secret place. So let's create the login form just to test it out. So let's just slap in here a login form. Or let's put it like in require once login.php. And let's create that thing login.php and here we will have a form with the method of post and action can be empty and we are going to have a username which is an input box with name username and we will have a password which is an input name password and type is of course password for the password and this is just type text and let's add a button login. And we might as well add like an h2 please log in. So now if we go to index and we are not logged in, it is going to say please log in. Let's see if it works. Let's start here a PHP server at localhost 8091, something like this. I already have that <laughs> running <laughs> apparently. Let's do 8055. And let's open it. So it says, please log in. We can't see the secret. Okay. Well, how do we handle the post from this? Well, we can just say, if is set post username and is set post password, then we are going to say, 
that user ID equals auth authenticate. And we pass in the post username here and the post password. And then if the user ID exists, then we are going to do auth log user in user ID. And then we can do like a header location slash and we can exit. Now, where should we put this? We can slap it here or we can slap it over here or we can even put it in the login.php. I'm not sure where to put this right now. Let's just slap it here. So now if we post a username and a password, then we're going to log in if it's correct. What if it's incorrect? Well, we should show some sort of error. And we could just do like a header again, and we could go to index.php and say error is something. But this is kind of annoying because then if you refresh the page, you still get the error. So let's do quick flash messages here. So we can just say session error equals wrong username or password. And then we do the header back into the front page. And then in our login, we can add here some PHP and we can say if is set session error, then we are going to echo. Let's do B style color red slash B. And here we are going to slap our error, but we have to use HTML special chars to avoid cross site scripting. And let's just put the session error in here. And then we want to, of course, remove the error. So it's not going to be shown again. So we can say session error is null. So now, if we try to log in, it should actually log in. Now, this is not really the best way of doing this, because I think if I refresh this now, and if I just log in like this, well, it actually worked. I think this has changed in some PHP version, because is set used to return false for an empty string. But nowadays it doesn't. It only returns false for null. Okay, well, I guess we can do it this way then. <laughs> so let's try to log in actually. And of course, if I refresh, the error goes away. If I click here, it says wrong username or password. I refresh, it goes away. If I put here Jack, and I put Jack's password, and I log in, then look at this. You got to the secret place. So that works. Amazing. And if I refresh this page, we are still logged in. So let's make it so that we can log out. Let's add a button here. Let's do just an echo, or we can just do this, and we can say form method post action. Again, we can put an empty action. Maybe we don't even have to have an action here. And we can just add a button here, log out. And we can add here a hidden field. So input type hidden name log out value true. So then we can check here that if is set post log out, then we are going to do auth log user out. And we probably want to do a header somewhere. Now, you could just use get and then you can log out from the URL. But that's not really a good idea for cross site request forgery. So let's do it properly with a form. So if we now refresh, we have a button for logging out. If I click here, then it will say please log in. And again, if we use Jill here, and we put some password that is incorrect, it will say wrong username or password. If I put in Jill and Jill's password, and I log in, then I got to the secret place. Now, one thing we still have to do is we have this role here in the database. So we should be able to check the role. Let's actually change the role here for Jill to zero. And let's make a function that checks the role. Now, one thing we could technically do in auth is when we log the user in, we would also put here like the logged in user role. But I don't like this because if we add a new role or we remove a role or if we change the role of a user, it will not be automatically updated in the session. 
So I think a better way would be to just check it from the database. Now, if you have millions of users, maybe you have to worry about stuff like this, but we don't have millions of users quite yet. So we can just check the database. So let's make a function. Where should we put the function? Let's slap it in here. Public function. We might have a get user role, or we could have a function like user has role, and then we pass in the role. But let's just do get user role, and we give it the integer of the user ID, and it will return an int or bool if the user was not found. And what we're going to do here is, again, we're going to do statement equals this database prepare, and we are going to select role from users where ID is the user ID. And we have to execute this with the user ID being the user ID. And again, let's wrap this in a try catch block. And then let's check the result. So we can probably say that the role is statement fetch column. So this will just fetch one column, which will be just the role. And this one will return a single column from the next row of a result set or false if there are no more rows. So we can do this and we can say if not role, in fact we have to say if role equals false, then we return false because that means the user was not found. Otherwise we return intval of the role because of course the role can be zero which is different from false. Now, we might actually make a function that gets all the data of the user. So then we can get the name and the role and everything in the same thing. But now, basically what we can do in index is once we get to the secret place, we can do something like this. If auth get user role, user ID equals one, we can do something else. We can say echo you are an administrator and otherwise echo you are a regular user for example so now if we go here and we refresh then i am a regular user am i did i log in with jill i think i did but if i go with jack with jack's password then i wrote something wrong <laughs> jack jack's password then I am now an administrator. So now it works. We have user roles and we have a persistent session and everything works. Now, one thing you might want to do when you log in and log out is actually call session regenerate ID. And we probably want to pass in true to this so that we delete the old session. And this is just so that you can't do session hijacking as easily. So let's see, if we log out and we log in as Jack with Jack's password, does it still work? Yes, we are an administrator. And if we go to the inspection here and we go to application and we go to cookies, then you can see here that we have this PHP session ID. And the thing is that you can actually hijack this session if you go like this. Let's copy this session ID. Let's go to Firefox. And here, if we go to localhost 8055, we are not logged in. But if we had access to this session ID, then what we could do is we could go here to application. Wait a minute. <laughs> Where's the cookies in Firefox? Maybe it's in storage. And we have a session ID. What if we go here and we slap this code in here from the other session and then we go and refresh we are the administrator oh my goodness now as you can see we're not really preventing this from happening but if we now go to chrome and we log out from here then it should delete the old session so if we now go back here and refresh then we are not logged in anymore so you should regenerate the ID every now and then so that if someone has gotten your session ID, they will be logged out. Now you could combat this in other ways, like you could like save 
the IP of the user in the session as well and check that. But that's not really a good thing to just do that because somebody might use a VPN or their IP might change. You could use the user agent maybe or something like this. But anyway, this is just a simple login system. So we are not going to get into those aspects. If you want to get into those aspects, let me know in the comments and maybe I will make a future video where I secure this even further. And if you do want to see future videos like this, then make sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next video I post. Okay, so after adding a few comments to the code, here is the final system. So we have auth.php that has an auth class. We can construct it with a PDO object for the database. We then have a function add user, which takes a username and a password and a role, and it adds that user with the password and the role into the database. Then we have an authenticate function, which authenticates a user based on a username and a password, and it will return the username whose username and password you put in or false if it is not found. Then we also have a get user role function, which takes a user ID and it gets the role for that user from the database. We also have a log user in function, which takes the user ID and it saves it into the session that this user is now logged in. And we also have a log user out, which just resets the logged in user session. And finally, we have the logged in user function, which checks who is logged in right now. And it returns either int, which is the ID of the user who is logged in or false if nobody is logged in. So what all these functions allow us to do is the following. We can require our auth.php. We can start the PHP session. We can connect to our database and we can set the error mode of the database so that we get the errors. We can initialize the auth class. And then here we are handling the submit of the login form. So if we get a username and a password, then we try to get the user based on that information. If we can get the user, then we log the user in into the session and then we redirect back to the front page. If we couldn't log in, then we add an error message to the session and then we just go back to the front page again. And here we handle the logout. So if we post the logout, then we just log the user out directly. And here we check, is somebody logged in right now? So we try to get in the current logged in user. If nobody is logged in, then we show the login form. And the login form is here in the separate file. And here we are handling this error. So if there is an error in the session, then we show the error. So this is the flash error. And if there actually is a user logged in, then we do everything else after this if statement. And here we just check the user role. If the current user has a role of one, then we can show you are an administrator and otherwise we can show you are a regular user. And here's the button for the logout form. And here it is in action. <laughs> it's not very pretty, but it works. So if we go to the system, it will at first say, please log in. If we add a username, Jack, and we use the wrong password and we try to log in, it will say wrong username or password. If we actually use the right password, Jack's password, and we log in, then we are actually logged in as an administrator because Jack is an administrator. And if we refresh the page, then of course we are still logged in. If we click log out, we are going to be logged out. And if we refresh, we are still logged out. If we go with the Jill account and Jill's password and we log in, then now we are a regular user. And again, if we refresh, we are still logged in and we can log out. And also the flash errors will disappear if we refresh the page. So everything works. I hope you found this video useful. And if you did, then leave me a like and consider subscribing to my channel. Also, leave me a comment down below. And if you have any suggestions on how to make this login system better, then leave those comments down below as well, or submit a pull request on my GitHub repository, which I will link down below.
Anyway, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.